Before China, there was Japan who was regarded as a big threat to the US and the world order back then. And we're not talking about World War II, we're talking about just a couple decades ago. A book named The Upcoming War with Japan was published in the 1990s, predicting a war between the West and Japan. So how rich were Japan and the Japanese people back then? It was estimated that the property value combined in just Tokyo, the capital city of Japan, can buy off the entire USA. The Japanese tourists were just like the Chinese tourists today, buying everything, everywhere, from luxury goods to big companies. So what happened after? How did the Japanese economy collapse and enter the last decades, a 10-20 years recession? Let's find out. Welcome to this episode of Yuan Report. My name is Xiaoyu. Before we start, if you're interested in learning more about current events around the globe, drop a like and subscribe to the channel. We have new videos coming out every week. Let's begin. It all started with the joint agreement called the Plaza Accord between Japan, the US, and a few European nations. During the 1980s, the US government had a very, very bad financial deficit and trade deficit, meaning that the US government was buying a lot more from other countries than it sells. In simpler words, the US were losing money and heavily in debt. In order to get out of this situation, the US summoned its close friends, Japan, West Germany, France, and UK for a meeting in New York. So the Americans says dollar currency is way too high now and we need to drive it down, so the US can have a price advantage with selling its products to other countries. Products made in the USA were top quality back then, so everyone thought it would be great to buy American goods cheaper, and everyone just signed the agreement and decided to lower the dollar value. So the big guys started to sell off the American dollar, and therefore, simultaneously, the value of the Japanese yen skyrocketed. Because of the increasing value of the Japanese yen, it became very difficult for Japan to export its products to other countries. So the Japanese government had to figure out a way to help its export-oriented companies, which is to lower the interest rates, and at the same time, stimulating domestic consumptions. However, things didn't turn out quite the way the Japanese government wanted. People took their money out the bank, started to invest in stocks and properties, and everything took off. Eventually, this formed a giant, giant bubble. So how did this giant bubble burst? So there was this guy named Miyano Yasushi who became the governor of the Bank of Japan in the 1980s. So when he took the office, he was like, no, the Japanese market is too damn hot and we need to cool it down. So what did he do? He did two things. First of all, he limited the loans from banks to companies, stopping these companies from pouring money into the markets. Second, he raised the interest rate of loans significantly. And this is a move that messed up the Japanese economy. Because the commercial banks cannot make any money, they decided to take the money back from all the borrowers. And you know stocks and property price rise because people with money are lining up to buy them. But now people have no money because they were all taken back. So the financial markets in Japan exploded. Everything started to plummet like you were holding your pee for three days. And the Japanese market lost over $600 billion because of that. Think about that. That was in the 1980s, $600 billion. So that's how the Japanese economy went into a 20 years recession. Well, what I told is probably just the tip of iceberg. Guys, tell me what do you think about this whole thing in the comment section below. Do you think China is going to be the next Japan? Well, thank you all for watching. If you enjoy the content, drop a like and hit that subscribe button. And I will see you in the next report.